Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex and I am back with episode two in my little Stardew Valley Let's Play where I start by forgetting how to access my mailbox. I couldn't remember what button to press, but I got it. Whoever said it was easy to start learning games on keyboard and mouse was a liar. I don't know if anyone's ever said that, but if they did, they were lying. Basically, all of my mail today was just Jojo being like, hey, you know how we like dropped a lot of stuff in the river up where the mines are? Mm-hmm, we cleaned that up, bestie. So I do forget, I think, on this entire first day to go check that out, but I will in the future be going on a little mining excursion. Don't even worry. I just felt like I was in the mood to play Stardew today and wouldn't you know it, I also forgot how to open a gate. So I did break my fence again, then forgot how to craft. Like I kept, it's a struggle, bro. It's a learning keyboard and mouse is a struggle. I just kept hitting buttons and I was like, eventually the crafting interface is gonna come up. So I was trying to stand there so my chickens wouldn't get out. I don't know if they can just push past you anyway. Then I almost broke another fence twice. It was, you know, um, not my best work. I did figure it out though, look at me. Look at me making a little fence. Everything, everything turned out well, right? None of my chickens escaped. I was able to pet them and give them a good little time here. And then I went out into the town and I had been wondering during my first video when I would learn about the community center as opposed to Jojo Mart. I know you can choose like either way. I've never, I've never chosen to get a Jojo membership and see what that playthrough looks like. So if any of you have done the evil route, let me know the like capitalism route. But anyway, I was very eager to hear about the community center from our king, I mean, Mayor Lewis. I feel like that was what made Stardew fun for me the first time around. Like I'm, I know I'm a design girly in Animal Crossing and I stand by that, but I think I'm a completionist girly in Stardew Valley. So doing the community center kind of gave me guidance for what I should be aiming to do with my days. Um, I know Stardew is kind of overwhelming for a lot of people. The community center is a good place to start, finding some structure for your days, figuring out what you still need to collect for the community center, even though it is a little confusing at first. Anyway, I just kind of talked over Lewis doing whatever the heck he was talking about there. I'm pretty sure he was just explaining that if one more person buys a Jojo membership, he'll like let them buy this land. So the community center is gone forever. Obviously, if you have a heart and a small town soul, you know that's not what we're gonna do. Um, this is where we like just start to discover the spirits that live here, the Junimo that just appeared. Love that, Lewis thinks we're losing our mind. He like turns around and it disappears. Of course, classic like movie moment. You just, you're made to look insane. So anyway, but I was really excited to finally get to the community center. To be clear, it's been years since I played Stardew Valley like this. Like when I did my first community center, it was in like 2021. No, no, no. It was like 2019. So it's been a long time. I don't remember anything about getting the community center started. And that did in fact make this a little confusing. I would also go as far as to say that I'm God's bravest soldier because I did attempt to fish today. My current, like, you know how you can get the little goals beside Pierre's shop where they like, people can ask you to get stuff for them. I needed to get an anchovy for Gus. And while I don't remember where most of the fish come from, I'm pretty confident that anchovy is a sea fish. So I went, I went fishing. I think that mouse is easier for me than the controllers on the Switch, and I did get an anchovy, so also walked by Elliot's house, the love of my life, and guess where he was? Probably in his house, sitting there where I can't access him. Still haven't met that man, for the record, but we got our first request out of the way, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of gold for me. Then I decided that I was actually, I forgot that you could actually go in the community center. I was like, oh yeah, let me go back up there and like explore. And I was like, oh yeah, they have these little plaques where you can like give the Junimo things. Then I realized you can't read it. So anyway, again, don't remember how the community center works. I decided to walk around. I was like trying to interact with everything. I was like, wait, I know I can get fish for part. I know there's like stuff I need to get in here. Instead, I was just trying to fish off of the bulletin board. It was confusing. I couldn't, I don't remember the structure of how the community center is completed. No idea what I'm supposed to be doing at this point. And then I met Elliot. It was like, it was like fate. He's like, oh, the new farmer we've all been expecting. I'm Elliot, I live in the little cabin by the beach. Elliot, just take my hand now. Yes, I do, I'll marry you. Mm-hmm. 
he's gonna break my heart at the spring dance already, I, I know. In honor of meeting Elliot, I decided to go fishing again, and this was a dodgy one, right? But not because the fish was difficult, it's because there was a treasure chest, and I was like, nah, that could have something really cool in it. And then I almost lost the fish. It was a really close call, really close call, but not to spoil it, I do get it, because what am I? Again, God's bravest soldier, the best fisherman in the valley, and I am including Wally in that statement, so Wally Willie? I never remember his name. I'm so sorry to that man. After my enormous fishing success, it was time for a new day and the wizard answered all my questions. He was like, oh my gosh, I see you've been in the community center. I might have some information for your rat problem, which is how Lewis described the Junimo. Since he didn't see them, he's like, oh, you're probably just seeing rats, which felt like kind of gaslighting, but thank you, Lewis, for being literally a gaslighter. Um, that's a controversial statement. I'm sorry, Lewis, you're a good guy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna out you and Marnie's relationship soon also, by the way. Anyway, I did farm, which was not, it was out of the usual for me as, you know, a resident of Stardew Valley, someone who moved here specifically to farm, not really in my daily quota farming, but I did it today because I'm, again, very brave, very brave. I also figured it would be good to sell I was like, yeah, let me go ahead and harvest these parsnips because I might actually have money in the future. Spoiler alert, I spend it somehow. I don't even remember how at this point, like looking back, I'm watching this video and I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know. I don't know what I was ever doing, but my money's gone. My money is gone at this point in time. Also, for the record, I had to go back outside to pet one of my chickens because I realized I hadn't. In typical Lex fashion, um, as in being a noob in Stardew Valley again, I remember generally where the wizard's tower was. And I mean, I'm pretty sure I tried to go in it last time I was playing Stardew Valley, so like in my last video. Forgot and got lost, but here I am eventually discovering Rasmodius's tower. Is it Rasmodius or Rasmodius? I'm not even sure. But I went in and brother was having his usual wizardly magic time, his suspicious cauldron that, oh my gosh, that's what it's called in Animal Crossing, isn't it? The suspicious cauldron. Anyway, now I get it. He is definitely a character. I just wanted to know how to, I just wanted to be able to read the community center stuff. So I was just waiting for him to kind of like get to the point here. I'm pretty sure bro just likes to hear himself speak because I swear it took forever for us to get to the point, but he did eventually give me this suspicious drink that turned me green um, and then turned everything green, which is definitely not what I was hoping for when I visited the wizard, but he assured me that this was learning the forest magic or something. And I mean, there are trees, so it's believable. That's, yeah, that looks like forest magic to me. I, side note, really like the cutscenes like this in Stardew Valley. I think they're really funny. I don't know. Something about it, it's like trippy, but in a good way. Um, so anyway, good job, Concerned Ape. That was fun and cute. But now I can hopefully read the Junimo scrolls. So let's go. In another noob move, I needed to gift someone. And the only gift I could remember that was someone's favorite was the Joja soda for Sam. And then look at how close to his room he was. I can't go in his room. So I was like panicking, but I got him to stop. I was able to give him a Joja can and I was like, yeah. Who am I? The literal best gift giver in the valley. I remembered that you liked this actual trash. The next day I started fresh at the community center. I remembered I could actually read the scrolls now. So the crafts room is the first one you get to contribute to, to restore the community center. I couldn't remember what the process was here either. I think as you contribute things, you can unlock other rooms and start contributing things to them too. All I had on me was this spring foraging item, the daffodil or whatever. So, but yeah, I just took a look at all of this. I remember it was like really, whatchamacallit, like satisfying to put things in for the foraging bundles it, or just for anything. It feels like the sounds and everything are so nice. So the community center really is my reason for playing Stardew Valley. Don't worry, I'm gonna try to decorate my farm this time really well. So hopefully that will extend beyond the lifetime of the community center being built. Again, it's been a long time since I did all this. I also cut it out, but I did go back to my house to get the stuff for the construction bundle with the exception of the 10 hardwood. After that, I decided to fish because I needed specifically a small mouth bass, I think for Emily, Emily, Haley, 
Haley wanted that. I don't know why. So here I am fishing in the river and lo and behold, I got a small mouth bass. It's the second fish. I cut out the first one. I just wanted it to seem like I, I wanted it to seem like I got it first try, but then I told you, and there's also a visible fish in my inventory. So that didn't work out for me, but yeah, I'm super cool. And it was like really lucky because I got the small mouth bass first. You know what I mean? Then I was trying, it felt just like when I was trying to catch Sam. I'm trying to catch Haley before she gets to her room and then she goes in her house. I'm hardcore panicking. I almost ate the fish on accident. That was a whole thing. If you play Stardew Valley, I feel like you get it. You get it. I also apparently started fresh again because why would we play through whole Stardew Valley days? Clint was here this time. I also really like when there are characters waiting outside for you. I don't know, it feels special. It's like, yeah. I'm getting visited. He was just telling me about furnaces and how I could like smelt ores, which I do need, in fact, in order to get, I think a silo. I think I need like copper bars or something. So thank you, Clint. I can't wait to get into your very interesting obsession with Emily King, but thank you for now. Possibly the most important thing that happened today was the hat mouse telling me me sell hats. So, you know, I had to stop by and check out his selection later. I also did farm again, doing my work. I mean, for three plants that I was able to water at the time, did my work. I then contributed some more to the community center. I was really on a roll today. I feel like I can't donate anything now. I gave my other leak to George because for some reason, He's the other one that I remember. I specifically remember that George likes leeks. George likes leeks and Sam likes Joja cans. Couldn't tell you what my favorite guy Elliot likes, but speaking of the devil, here he is. Look at him. Cute boy with long hair. Best Stardew Valley man. Should I go for Sebastian this time though? Like be honest. Should I try someone else since I've already married Elliot before? I don't know. I don't know. Here I am visiting the hat mouse. Um, he was selling a really overpriced Southwester hat or something. And then I saw these waterfalls. And correct me if I'm wrong, Stardew Valley players, but are these new? I don't remember there being like scenic waterfalls out here before this update. I don't know. Maybe I just never went that far down or maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I don't remember there being any. I also brought another request. Leah needed some seaweed and she gave me a prize ticket. If you'll remember from my first little let's play, we saw a ticket machine in Mayor Lewis's house. So, you know, I had to run over there. I'm not sure yet at this point what the prize ticket gets me, but I remember looking at the machine in his house and being like, what the heck is this? So we went over and he was in front of the machine as he should be. He's ready to explain away. I'm gonna just like talk over all that, but essentially he like wants to have an incentive for people to help each other. He doesn't want it to be about the prizes. They're just there as like an additional thing. Like, hey, here's a reward for helping rather than like, hey, you should help because you'll get a reward. Does that make sense? He wants people to have goodwill, not just want the prize. But yeah, anyway, so I have a prize ticket. When Lewis finally stopped yapping, I was like, okay, let me go get my prize. And it turns out you just get the first one and then it moves along. So my next thing to look forward to is whatever that tree sapling is, maybe an apricot or a peach. I then decided that even though it was very late at night, it was the perfect time for me to go crafting. I needed to make a scarecrow for a quest and it is 10 p.m. and dark outside, but I was like, you know what? What better time to protect my plants than overnight when the crows can come? Someone told me the limit is 15 crops before crows can start taking your plants. So I did in fact need a scarecrow. There are actual crows in the game that will take your things if you're not protecting your plants. Mine survived the night and here I am watering them again, like a good little Stardew Valley farmer citizen. I almost forgot and ended early, but I did go into the mines. I just forgot for a few in-game days, no big deal. But this guy was there, the adventurer or whatever, dude. And I did go and have my full Stardew Valley experience by going into the mines. He gave me my rusty sword. I did not say that, not trusty, but rusty. And I went into the mine. I, I have said this before about Minecraft. I used to just mine for hours. I'm the same way in Stardew Valley, especially in winter when you don't really have crops to farm. I would just mine like 
the entire season. It would just be me hitting rocks. And that was peak entertainment for me. So this is big deal. This is big news. I'm getting into my mining era as I should. It also is still kind of creepy to me. The sounds, the like loneliness down here, the worry that I'm going to lose one of my like four total items that I have in my inventory. It's rough out here. But yeah, this was a productive day two, but now we're in game in day nine of Stardew Valley. I am so open to any of your tips, any like tutorials or websites, etc., that would help me get on track. Let me know. But thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next playthrough. Bye!